today between the visiting Notre Dame College and the home team, the University of Charleston Golden Eagles. Now let's meet the starting lineups for both teams. First, let's meet the starters for Notre Dame College, the number three seed, who enters today's match with a record of 15 wins, three losses, is Daniel Smee. He is assisted by Travis Brent, Gary Ogilvie, Chris Gribben, Pablo Terminello, and Anatole Levalua. At this time, we ask that you please stand and gentlemen, remove your hats as we pay tribute to America and those who protect it with the playing of the national anthem. Good afternoon and welcome inside Elliott Field here on the Welch Athletic Complex at the University of Charleston for today's 2022 Mountain East Conference Men's Soccer Championship. My name is Jack Whitrow. Joining me today, my partner Michael Schultz. And Michael, we should have a good one. These two have met already twice this year, both times the University of Charleston taking a 2-0 victory. But Notre Dame, like we saw in their last semifinal, don't count them out. They were down by two going in the 85th minute against Davis and Elkins, and a miracle happened. A miracle happened in the, in the form of two goals, as you said, in the last few minutes, and then they prevailed on penalty kicks yep. on El Davis and Elkins' home field. So I think Charleston would be happy with a repeat of the first two matches between these two, 2-0 two, two wins both times, as you mentioned. As far as Notre Dame is concerned, they'd like to have a repeat exactly. upset on the road here at Charleston, exactly what they did against Davis and Elkins. Again, the, well, look at these starters for today. The start at 11 for the Falcons. They come in at 15-3 and 2 overall, 12-3 and 1 in conference play under seventh year head coach Carl Nolan. Between the posts is Pedro Alves, the junior goalkeeper along with Leonardo Palmieri, Antonio Bittencourt, Carlos Almeida, Taylor Dyson, Ned Dry, Marcus Vinicius Pereira gets the start, the junior midfielder. Simo Coelho gets the start, the freshman. Connor O'Reilly, Callum Cleary, and rounding out the starting 11, Jordan Lewis. For Charleston in the all-white kits this afternoon, inside the post, Mark Torado, the junior goalkeeper. Luis Maestre, Philip Mercado, Paul Cagliari, Edu Aranzo, Devon Cancella, the defensive player of the year for the Mountain East Conference. Santonio, or yes, Santiago, excuse me, Hoyas, the freshman forward. Javier Sanchez, Matia Vazzoni, the defender. Louis Redding, and rounding out Charleston's lineup, Tristan Rose, the defender, the sophomore out of Cortland, Ohio. And we are set to go here. The kickoff was scheduled for 3 o'clock. We're three minutes late. But this is going to be a good one. Notre Dame in the all-blue kits with the gold numbers trimmed out in the white. And again, Charleston in the all-white kits with the maroon numbers. Beautiful day here on the banks of Call River in Charleston, West Virginia for this Mountain East Conference Men's Soccer Championship. 79 degrees on November 11th. Unbelievable. A little bit of a wind coming towards us here in the box. That may have some effect on corner kicks or some longer entry passes. We'll see. That went into the corner. And it'll be a throw in for the Falcons. As the referee will back him up.
Another throw in here near side along the touch line. Falcons reverse it over on the other side. Carlos Almeida. Now that we're working back to their goalkeeper, Pedro Alves. Charleston, we see them a lot. They put the pressure on those defenders throughout the contest. And Charleston, again, has shown all year long the depth of this roster wears down people. And that depth allows Charleston to put that pressure on the ball handlers trying to force the turnover. We saw that on Wednesday nights against Wheeling in the semifinals here at the Welsh Athletic Center. I expect to see that again here today from Charleston. It was a 3-0 victory for Charleston as they're in the attacking third. Aronzo trying to get it into the box. Cagliari works it over left side. They get it across, and it goes clear through. Redding gives chase, and then it's cleared out, and that'll be a throw in for Charleston. Boy, Redding had a run to the far post just about a step and a half too late. Otherwise, he had a clear path to the goal with a one-touch. Let's take a look at that replay. And a beautiful cross, and Redding just could not get there. Now, there was a defender there, but Redding could have slipped inside of him. He would have had something. Midfield. Almada gets it taken away. Now Redding at the feet. Again, Charleston with the defensive pressure forces the turnover. This time they're in the final third. Cagliari. He'll dribble into the 18. Mercado, contact, and they're going to get a foul on Felipe Mercado. Mercado saying he got a foot on the ball. Actually, it was a nice little touch pass to his teammate. Official deemed it was a slightly dangerous play, enough for at least a foul, normal foul. Marcus Vinicius Pereira is down on the turf. If we can take a look at the replay here, as Cagliari tried to work it into the 18 and does. And there you see it. The foul called on Mercado. I think Mercado, because he extended, really couldn't control the ball. Wasn't while well, he touched it to a teammate, it really wasn't a controlled touch. Pereira back up on his feet. Looks like he's going to be all right. That's good. They'll work it back to Alves. Now near side. Long ball up ahead. Coelho, he'll bring it back to the midfield. This is a Notre Dame team that averages about two and a half goals a game. I'm going to go out on a limb here, Jack, and say they're not going to have a half a goal today. Yeah. Ball out on the touchline over on the far side. Again, it'll be a throw in for Notre Dame. They get it into the attacking third. Up top, a long shot that time. Sells way over top the crossbar. It'll be a goal kick for Charleston. As five minutes into this contest, still scoreless here on a beautiful day. Now the sun popping out. Carlos Almeida with that shot. Long shot. Almost. Seems kind of like a, I don't know, as you can see on your replay here. Test the goalkeeper, make sure that Toronto is awake. I assure you he is. Dangerous play there, but Charleston able to keep possession. Cancillo works it over on the far side. They keep it in, but Notre Dame will take it back. Look at that nice cheap. pressure there. Yeah, two Charleston defenders just absolutely collapsed on the Notre Dame ball hander and took the ball, except Notre Dame gets it right back. Now they're... Attacking once again, contact, they play on. Nice slide tackle there, I believe that was Mercado. Possession stays with the Falcons. Coelho tries to go through a couple defenders. Couldn't get it through, they'll work it back to Toronto. Coelho was looking for the call. Nobody touched him, he went down as he slipped between two Charleston players. He was outside the 18, so he wasn't going to get a... Penalty in the box, but just trying for something. Maestre works it back to his defender. Santiago, or that was Javier Sanchez, my fault. 
Can't believe I got him and Hoyas confused. Cagliari gets a touch on it. It'll roll down and out. It'll be a throw in for Notre Dame. I'm just glad we heard you say it's your fault. We've got it on tape now. <laughs> Charleston coming in, 65 goals on the season. The Falcons with 55, and both of them have taken 328 shots on the season. Charleston 161 on goal. For Notre Dame, 160. So how's that for even numbers? I put that in the category of statistical oddities. But these teams match up statistically really well. Charleston, yep. one more goal per game. Both teams, though, very stingy when it comes to giving up goals. Ball taken away. Canchilla, the Mountain East Conference Defender of the Year. As Maestre will dribble it through the midfield. Now he'll get it back. Maestre looking for Hoyas. Well, defender Maestre gets a touch in the box, and that one's gathered up by Pedro Alves. Maestre just found himself with room, and no Notre Dame player was going to check him, so... It's like in basketball, if no one's going to stop the ball, just keep going. Yep. Got himself into a dangerous position, but didn't really, couldn't get much on that ball. Take a look at the replay. You can tell he got him just to the edge of the 18, but really didn't have enough to get anything on the ball. Easy save. Foul called on Charleston. Falcons work it here near side. Jordan Lewis up to the midfield and then a touch looking for Coelho. And contact there, Coelho and Maestre. The cross inside and that one kicked away. Played into the corner again. And that'll roll out. And that's going to be a corner kick. Nice job by Coelho. Notre Dame. Coelho, not only did he get that first ball, Gather it, get something going, cross goal. But then he was able to box out. Not sure who it was. It might have been Maestre. And force yep. the corner kick. Good job by the freshman. So corner kick here near side. Leonardo Palmieri, the junior. Take it with the left foot. High cross coming through was Lewis unable to get a header on it, and it's cleared out by Charleston. Boy, Lewis had room. That ball just went a little bit over his head. There, were the, there was a foul called anyway. Wouldn't yep. have counted, but still that was a dangerous moment for Charleston and a great opportunity for Notre Dame. See here, it's a high ball sent towards the far post. There's Lewis flying in, but just a little over his head. Again, Notre Dame on the attack here. Dyson looking for options, works it over here. Coelho, but the flag comes up and offsides on Simu Coelho. And if you're Charleston, you got to find number eight in blue. Tyler Dyson leads this team with 12 goals, 12 assists. Yep. So he can both put it into the net and he can assist his teammates. We've already seen here in the early going. He's a couple of good passes, put Coelho into decent positions. Long ball. Hoya's got a foot on it. Now Canchilla works it forward. Top of the 18. Aranzo. Hoya. Redding. The shot. The goal. Near post. Louis Redding makes, puts Charleston up 1 0. Just beautiful footwork in the corner of the 18. Charleston, the first to break through at 35-16. Take a look at the replay from behind the goal, and Redding comes open and just buries it. He goes opposite post, near post for us. Beautiful touch pass. Put Redding in such a great position. He had a chance to touch it first, frame it up, and then get a rip on it. Alves, the goalie for Notre Dame, came up, 
Not sure if he was screaming at a teammate or at the official. Thought maybe somebody was offside for Charleston. Yep. So at the 10-minute mark, Charleston goes up 1-0. On a Louis Redding goal. Low left. Jack, yes. fifth goal Charleston has scored against Notre Dame this year. That's the first one by somebody not named Mercado or Diakis. Near side, across into the 18. That one headed away. Sanchez, he'll work it out. Ball stays at the top of the 18. Now cleared out by Charleston. Into the stands here near side. Boy, those first five minutes after a goal are so important because what the other team does, thinking you're going to have a bit of a letdown because yep. you're still celebrating, they attack. And you saw this Notre Dame team came out after that goal, and they are just on the attack trying to catch Charleston still in celebration mode. Throw in near side along the touch line. And now the flag comes up and a foul on Charleston. And I believe they may give it that one on my straight. So a free kick here for the Falcons. Let's see who take it, takes it. It'll be Palmieri. It's a good sales job by number 11, Perare. Not sure there was a whole lot of contact, but there was enough that the official on the near side was right on it, raised his flag immediately. Palmieri will take it. He's got an option here on the near side in the 18. That's Pereira, and that one in and easily gathered up by Toronto. Yeah, that ball was sent straight into the center of the, the goal mouth. That's just an easy save for Toronto. Better if you have something going to either near or far post, create better angles. Another long ball, Hoyas. That one will be gathered up by Alves as they were looking for Santiago Hoyas, the freshman. It was a good idea by Notre Dame, catching Notre Dame on a counterattack. Just a little long out Hoyas of Hoyas. Yeah, there's yeah. a touch from Hoyas. They take it away. Aronzo giving chase from behind. Cleary. Now Mercado. They'll reverse it over to the far side, Mattia Vazzoni. Now they'll reset everything back out top with Sanchez. Looking for Maestre, well defended by Callum Cleary. Throw in for Charleston near side. They'll back Maestre up. This official is fastidious with where he is allowing the players to throw the ball in on side outs. The second time. That's a big word for picky. Fastidious is uh, very picky. Detailed? Yeah, very detailed. Really? Okay. But it's the second time we've I'm, seen this I'm, official. I'm, I'm learning these big words. So. I, you're learnable. <laughs> it's one of the things I like about you. Throw in for Notre Dame, and that one out. Off of the Golden Eagles would be a throw in there side from midfield now. Conchilla and Maestre were fighting over that ball, not realizing it was two teammates fighting for it. Charleston looking to attack again with Edu Aranzo. Those bright orange boots that he's got on. Is that what you do? You call them boots? Well done. Thank you. I've been learning. Maestre left side, top of the 18. And tried to flick it back to Aronzo. And I'm not sure of a miscommunication. Aronzo looked like he wasn't ready for it. Yeah, I thought Maestre thought that Aronzo was going to take a, a run towards a near post. And Aronzo had stopped short. As a result, that pass from Maestre just out of his reach. It's a good thought for the Golden Eagles. You take a look at the replay again. Maestre touch there. Nobody there to receive it. And we've got a whistle and a foul on Notre Dame. Quickly played. Here comes Redding. His goal was the difference right now in this contest. And they're looking for Redding again in the box. That one deflected out. That's going to be a corner kick for Charleston. Their first of the day. 
Right now, Charleston is dominating the midfield. As a result, they're getting better offensive pushes, good buildup. And Redding really no hope of getting it towards the goal, but he earned Charleston, see, as you can see from that angle, but he earned Charleston a corner kick. Ronzo will take it from the corner far side. Low liner, top of the six. That one headed by Charleston, but comes here near side. Canchilla will back it up. Works it into the box again. The header by Cagliari, and he scores. Paul Cagliari. Right place, right time that time for the cross from Ken Chilla. Great play by Cachilla, just backing out, being patient, drawing the defender towards him when he was ready. Beautiful center. And right there to Cagliari, who headed into the far, right inside the far post. Well done by the Golden Eagles. So 2-0, Charleston leading here in the 15th minute. We take a look at the replay, and there you see it, Cagliari. Just went up. I'm sorry, that was, yeah, Cagliari just went up uh, above everybody else and got the header on it for the second goal of the day for Charleston. What a delivery by Conchilla. And again, just kind of drawing the defender out, not rushing things, letting his teammates get in a good position. Well done by the Golden Eagles. Fifth goal of the season for Paul Cagliari. And now they stop it again as we look again at the replay. And there you see a much better angle of him going up into the air and getting the header on it. Just under 30 to go. First half, 2-0 Charleston. If you're Notre Dame, you just need to settle down. You know you can come back from two goal deficits. Did that on Wednesday in the last six, seven minutes against D&E. But right now, they are just, they're being outworked on the, in the midfield. Their name just has to show a little bit more urgency and energy here. Ball played into the midfield. Mercado there, but taken away, and there you go. Notre Dame on the attack with Almeida. Works it over near side. Taylor Dyson, his shot, and that one sails to the right of the goal. Goal kick for Charleston. There you go, Michael. That's, yeah. You said that's what they need to do? Yeah, Dyson looked like he was actually trying to go into the far corner, but it didn't get a good angle on kicking the ball so that it actually knuckled or screwballed out away from the goal. But a little bit more urgency, a little bit more energy just in that 30-second burst. You can see here Dyson lines it up. Looks like he's trying to go far corner and it just slithers on right. But that's what the Falcons need to demonstrate more if they want to get back into this championship match ball played out off the header from Callum Cleary it'll be a throw for Charleston get it in to Redding he'll touch it back my straight back to Redding nice footwork Cagliari and there's the whistle and a foul on Notre Dame Falcons had him hemmed in there, and then they commit the foul. That's a pretty obvious foul, and the, the official with the very short tweet, as if to say, come on, <laughs> Notre Dame, you knew that was a foul. Cangella, he'll work it back to his goalkeeper, Mark Tirado. Notre Dame pressing a little bit more, trying to apply just a little bit more pressure on the ball than they've done in the early stages of the first half. And chill a nice ball up ahead over in the far side. Bazzoni tried to cross it through. That'll be knocked out. Boy, those are, the, those are the passes that don't show up in the statistics or in the score sheet, but that was a beautiful pass forward into the right-hand corner. And an offside's on Charleston. So the flag comes up. They threw it in, and they had guys behind it. So obvious offsides. Maybe a little too quick on the throw in. Charleston likes to quick set. Yes. 
Far side played ahead and misplayed and back into the feet of Charleston. Midfield, Redding gets a touch. Aronzo. He'll dribble. Back to the near side, Mercado. Up ahead, Cagliari. And he'll try to track it down and does and then sends it out for a throw in for Notre Dame. Good crowd on hand today. A lot of maroon and gold and a lot of blue and gold here today. It's good to see the Falcons fans make it down here to Charleston. From South Euclid, Ohio. Battle here, and now they get a whistle and a foul on Felipe Mercado. Mercado just puts his hands to his side, looks at the official, says ticky tack. And, and the official now says, they yeah. stop the clock, and we've got an injury for Notre Dame. And we'll take a break. Charleston leading 2-0 here in the opening half of this Mountain East Conference Men's Soccer Championship. Nova Insurance, we're committed to leaving a lasting impression in all communities we serve. We support local causes that mirror the values and interests of our associates, agents, and policyholders. We partner with organizations that are dedicated to improving lives. We are committed to building something greater than ourselves. Encircling our communities with strength and support, we are Encova Insurance. Back here at Elliott Field, Charleston leading 2-0. Just over 25 minutes to go here in the first half in this Mountain East Conference Men's Soccer Championship. Jack Wither alongside Michael Schultz. Nice day here in Charleston, West Virginia. A little warm for November. We'll, we'll take it. 77 degrees currently. Mostly cloudy. The sun peeking in and out. So it'll be a throw in on the far side for Charleston. And now a corner kick. The second one of the day. And Charleston earns a corner kick. Edu Aranzo will take it again. But we're on the far side. Graduate student, they play it short. He'll get it back. Now sends it on the cross, near side post, and looks like Tristan Rose got a header on it, but gathered up and delivered down the field, but nothing there for Notre Dame. They'll play it back to Toronto. Charleston likes to send Tristan Rose into the middle. When they have corner kicks, usually on defense, but it's such a big body, it's such a big, strong guy. Time he was able to get his head on it, but really didn't get enough to threaten the goalkeeper that much. Ball at midfield, the battle. And a whistle and a foul. They get that one on Mercado. Notre Dame quickly plays it. Pereira, near side, he'll get it back. Challenged by Mercado, and they'll get him, and that was an obvious. <laughs> kind of had him in an arm bar there, and now they stop the clock once again as the referee comes over to talk to Mercado, and by the looks of the hand signals, he's saying, knock it off. Well, well, that's what I got. And, and Mercado, we saw it happen right in front of us, had, was grabbing the arm. I mean, it was clearly a foul. So I think the referee is like, look, just accept the fact you're caught doing something and stop with the jabber. Is that fair? Yes. Ball played out here, near side touch line, throw in for the Falcons. And before we do that, we're going to have some substitutions. And I'd love to tell you, but I have misplaced my binoculars. I'd offer you mine, but <laughs> I've left them in the car. <laughs> Maybe that's where mine are. So hopefully our folks up here will get us the substitutions, but we'll get to them. I can tell you one is number 18, Eden Ben Hege. Hege. And 
Kai playing. Wagner the other. And Hege is going to be playing center back for the Falcons. So I didn't need my binoculars, did I? No. Ball played to the near side, headed away by Maestre. Cagliari comes up, gets a touch. And now a whistle. Nope. A whistle. I thought I heard a whistle, but they play on. Ready. Even Cagliari stopped for a second, yeah. thinking he was going to have a whistle blown on him. Back drag, back over to Ready. Now Vazzoni feeds it up to Aronzo. Can't handle it. Wagner. Feeds it over to Pereira. Now Notre Dame surveying it, and they'll go with the long ball up ahead. Coelho, but well off sides for the Falcons. Can't tell if that was a deliberate play by number six for Charleston Lewis Maestre. Almost looked like he let Coelho go so that it would be off sides. Mm -hmm which, of course, is a heads-up play by Maestre, the senior. So they'll bring it back up to the spot of the offsides and play it in. Rose, Mazzoni gets a touch, and that one's played out. And it looks like Fairmont State may have won that women's. We've got people. This is the great thing about the Mountain East Conference and the MEC TV. We've got fans here for Charleston right below us watching the women's final up in Frostburg State. And that went to overtime. I'm not sure how long it went, but the flag comes off again, or comes up, excuse me, and offsides once again for Notre Dame. So I'm, I look down after they cheer, and I can see – the maroon of Fairmont State, the ladies cheering. So I assume, I don't, I'm not sure. We'll check on it. We'll have an oh, yeah. update at halftime. And I am correct, Fairmont State. The other Falcons. Caliari near side. Goes around his defender and Cleary dribbles to the 18, gets knocked down, and no call. They wow. play on, and here comes Notre Dame looking to attack. That was a physical, physical challenge by Taylor D Dyson of Notre Dame. No foul. Pereira plays it. Aronzo quickly comes over, gets a touch on it, but headed up to the midfield. Maestre. Trying to get, work it back to his teammate in Paul Cagliari and too much pace on that one. That one goes out here near side as we take a look at the replay. Tell you what, if you're going to take on the 6'2 Cagliari graduate student and you're going to knock him to the ground, you better bring it. And that's exactly what Taylor Dyson did on that, that challenge. Back to action here at Elliott Field. Midfield, Dyson works it back to a defender. Now they'll work it to the far side. Notre Dame having troubles right now getting to any offense. A couple long balls and efforts there, and here's another one that has resulted in offsides, and that one will go out a throw in for Charleston. That's a delicate moment as Alvis, the goalkeeper from Notre Dame, trying to get the ball over to his defender. Hoyos and Charleston almost disrupted that pass, and he would have had a wide-open goal in front of him. Hoyas is down at midfield. And he was challenged hard. It was a good tackle by the Falcons, though. Wagner works it up into the corner. Into the 18, headed away. Sanchez that time got a header on it, and Charleston clears it away. Hoyas back up on his feet. Redding with space at midfield. Louis Redding dribbles into the attacking third. Works it over to the right side. A 
cross. Cagliari was there, but misses the header. As Cleary clears it out momentarily. Maestre left side of the 18. Now dribbles in. Along the end line, ball spins. It goes out. And I believe that's going to be a corner kick for Charleston. Good sequence. Wagner put his Falcons into a good position on one end, but then Car Charleston counter attacked. And you saw right there, Cagliari had to head on it. Just couldn't get it directed towards the goal mouth enough. But that's a good counterattack by Charleston after a good effort by Wagner of Notre Dame. So we congratulate the Fairmont State Falcons women's soccer team, the 2022 Mountain East Conference champions. That cross goes all the way through. And again, Charleston got a touch on it. And that had some speed coming through there from Vazzoni. Ball is out. Throw in for the Falcons. Charleston so far has been really good on their corners. Creating decent chances. You can see there on the replay. Ball clearly went out on Charleston, but Charleston steals it on the inbound. Ball played back to Toronto. Just under 17 minutes here in the first half. 2-0, Charleston leading, Notre Dame. And this Mountain East Conference Men's Championship. And a run there, well defended that time by Jordan Lewis, the senior. This Lewis at six foot three. And see if you're Charleston, you're just applying this pressure, and you can see Notre Dame right now a little bit, a little bit unsure, even their safe pass passes in their own end. Now Charleston backs off. Lewis plays it over to Hege. Eden Ben Hege. Freshman out of Israel. Pereira back over to Lewis. The survey in that Charleston defense. And now another long attempt headed away by Sanchez. Yeah, Sanchez was right there, had it the whole time. Shut down Ned Dry, who was trying to make a run for Notre Dame. Lorenzo, he'll gather it up. Bazzoni, contact from behind. They let him play on. Dyson up ahead and nothing there. He was looking for his teammate at Ned Dry. It's a good idea. There was just a sliver there of an opening, but Dry just couldn't get enough. Didn't have enough time really to get ahead of steam going towards the goal, and the pass went beyond him. Luis Maestre looks around, delivers it up ahead. Cagliari, quick touch. Canchilla works it back. Charleston leading 2-0. You can, pr I can promise you, head coach Daniel Smee saying keep the pressure on. We've already seen them come up with a big victory in semifinals when they were down 2-0. Yeah, I have no doubt that this Charleston team, at the very least, was shown the last 10 minutes of that Davis Nilkins Notre Dame game. Yep. And will be reminded of that at halftime. Play the full 90 minutes. You do not want to give this Notre Dame team any hope if you're Charleston. If you're Notre Dame, of course, you're thinking, just stay in it. Yep. Just stay in it. Just keep working. Ball headed away. Again, Chillip with a touch over to Maestre, near side. He's got space as the Falcons pack that defense in. We saw Wheeling do that a lot there in the opening moments of the semifinal. Cagliari dribbles into the 18, the cross. Space, Aranzo. Knocked away, and that's going to be a corner kick for Charleston. Great individual play by Cagliari. To get that ball across the goal mouth. Went all the way across the goal mouth, but Aronzo just, Aronzo just could not get enough on it. Substitutions for both teams coming in. We see Barros as we look at the replay. See, that's a great run. Sends it all the way across. Untouched. Aronzo on the backside. Takes a bit of a moment to get it set. Just really didn't have a run up to the ball. Couldn't get anything on it. Barros checks in along with freshman 
Gio Diacos for Charleston. Set piece, sent in, knocked away, near side. Canchilla chases it down, and he'll let it go out. It'll be a throw in near side for Charleston. Again, Charleston on those corner kicks, they've been really good today. We haven't always seen it, yep. the quality of the entry from the Golden Eagles, but they have been today. Jose Rivas, the freshman, checks in for the Falcons as Maestre will throw it in near side looking for Barros. You talk about a big body. Dudu Barros has one as Diakos flips it in. The, in the sixth, the header, and it slowly rolls in for the Charleston goal. And up. Offsides. I did not see the flag come up over on the far side. So no goal for Charleston. Can we take a look at that replay, though? You can see right there, offsides, clearly offsides. But you're right, that header, you almost needed a sundial to time it going into the goal. <laughs> Just got enough on it. Needed a booster shot to get in there. <laughs> Ball deflected by Vazzoni. It'll be a throw in for the Falcons here at midfield. Usually when I say sundial, here again, you can see clearly offsides, heads it in, just barely touched, actually, by Alves, the goalkeeper, which is why it slowed down. Usually when I send sundial, I'm talking about you moving, except to any place other than a buffet table. Exactly. Then you need a, a stopwatch. Well, why else would you move fast? I, uh, I got nothing. <laughs> the flick here to the near side for Maestre. But look, if you know today, you just escaped it. You stay, escaped what, too early for a dagger, but that 3 0 would have been a daunting hill to climb. Yes. So if you know today, you need to take advantage of this. Ball played over on the far side, taken away. Nice job by Eden Benhege. As the sun peeks out from behind the clouds. And everybody on here on the near side. Throws their hands up to shield their eyes. Canchilla has room. Left side, Cagliari. Approaching 10-minute mark here in the first half. Charleston leading to nil. Nice defense that time by Cleary. But Charleston keeps possession. Maestre tried to work it through, taken away that time by Jack Milford. Long ball up ahead. Well defended that time by Tristan Rose and Javier Sanchez. Alton Silva in the game for Notre Dame. Playing center forward. Galliari keeps it in with Maestre. Now he'll give it back. Flicks it with the right, and that one, again, defended, but kept in. Nice work by Milford again. Everybody's on into the 18, and now the flag comes up. Wow. The entire Notre Dame bench is yeah. up about that call, and I agree with them. I thought Silva timed his run really, really well. After a nice delivery from Dyson. So I'm not, I'm not blaming Coach Carl Nolan at all for that, for being unhappy about that offside call. So they'll place the ball. And Here you can see there. Dyson with the nice long and looked to me like Silva was clearly, clearly onside when Dyson hit that ball. I mean, it was close. Of course, the referee down on the pitch, much better angle. And I as have always. better eyes than I have, too. Well, and as always, at the end of the day, he'll be right. Exactly. And no one will listen to me, so. 
Galliari near side, working against Cleary. And ball out. Throw in for Charleston. Substitution once again for the Golden Eagles. And that looks to be Felipe Delgado, the junior. Ball out and a throw in for Notre Dame. Delgado comes in for Lewis Redding. Slips into Redding's midfield slot. Ball again knocked away. Notre Dame just having trouble with any kind of buildup. Their best opportunities have been on fast breaks or quick strikes, but just not having much luck with the buildup against this Charleston defensive pressure. Maestre. Up ahead, Barros. In contact, they play on. Near side, Taylor Dyson works it up ahead. Silva back to Dyson. That time he was looking for Rivas over on the left wing and taken away by Charleston. As Toronto will pick it up as a Rivas challenge. Notre Dame player down. They stop action here as a Notre Dame Falcon player down there around midfield, and he remains down, and that is Connor O'Reilly, the sophomore. He's now up on one knee and slowly gets up on his feet, but he's holding that midsection, or maybe even it's his wrist, maybe. Uh, looks like the midsection. Maybe he got, had the wind knocked out of him. Good look at the referee and Mark Torado. Torado, a junior from Valencia, Spain. And he'll kick it away. Low liner. <laughs> no name. Yeah, it was easy. <laughs> no name player just put two hands on the back of Barros and pushed pretty blatantly. You mentioned that Barros is such a big body that when he is put, when he is moves like that, yes. that means there's a lot of force being applied to him. And the official was right there and saw it. Nice straight play. Plays it back to Sanchez. He'll get it over to his fellow defender. Now they play it back to Toronto. Just under six. Ball too long over the head of Delgado. And here comes Taylor Dyson. And that'll be a foul as they stop the clock. Oh, that's going to be our first and yellow. That's going to be a yellow card on Delgado. So a free kick for Notre Dame. And if you're Notre Dame, you're happy on, for the foul, but at this point you'd almost rather see Taylor Dyson kind of get some run. That time, as you can see out in this replay, got the run, but Delgado forcefully brought him down. Ball played in the 18 and along the end line, a shot there, but Toronto with the great hands covers it up. And I did not see who got a shot off there. Or even if that was a shot, it might have been a cross, another cross attempt. It was Hege. It was 18 Gio for Notre Dame. Diakos into the 18. That one kicked away. Another corner kick for Charleston. Hege just got a shot off. Didn't get much on it, but good pressure from Notre Dame. They need to do, obviously, more of that. That time it was off a, off a free kick. Again, the Falcons have trouble with their buildup here against this Charleston defense, but if they can get more free kicks where they can create something, opportunities. Seems to be the way to go for the Falcons so far here today. 
Corner kick for Charleston on the near side. Delgado jogs back to the top of the 18. That's Sam Bethel in the corner there. Yes. Did not see him check in. Snuck in on me. There's a little delay here. I'll make sure he sends you a text next time before oh, it goes sure in. Oh, he will. Not sure what the delay is. I think we're resetting the clock. 4.52 left on the clock. So Bethel will take the corner kick near side. High kick on the cross. And that one headed away, and that's going to be another corner kick from the other side for Charleston. Jordan Lewis. 6-3 defender for the Falcons. Went up, got his head on it. But uh, Charleston gets another corner kick. Delgado will take it. He'll send it in top of the six there, and that one cleared away. A rally kicks it away. Settled to the turf. Joao Belmutes. Belmutes. Barros. Looked like he was lining it up. Now the cross in. Cagliari got a touch on it. Batted around. Still in there. And now finally cleared away by Notre Dame. Midfield. Opportunity here. Great defense by Charleston. Sam Bethel hustled all the way back. And a great job by the graduate student. No kidding, because it was basically a one-on-one, -on -one and Bethel, through nothing but sheer determination and effort, got himself into the play. You can see it's a great touch pass by Silver to Kohau. Kohau, it's basically one-on-one -on -one at this point. Look at Bethel. Just get himself into it, times his tackle perfectly, gets his foot on the ball, and threat averted. Well done by Bethel. A good run by, by the Falcons. They yeah. need, again, more of that. They're going to get themselves back in this game. You were right. Coella had a 1v1 on Toronto. Again, you know, just a beautiful touch pass from Silva. Coella on here. And look at Bethel. Times yeah. it perfectly. Gets his foot on it. And just completely eliminates that run. Substitutions once again. Looks like we and have a we've got, Charleston yeah, player, player down. So we'll take a break. As injury time out here on the pitch. Charleston leading Notre Dame College 2-0 here in the first half of the 2022 Mountain East Conference Men's Championship. Back here to Elliott Field as Tristan Rose was helped off the field. And Fran Anton will come out onto the pitch for Charleston. That middle back position. All played here near side out. And now Cagliari is down for Charleston as they stop the clock once again. Cagliari looks like he's holding his right knee. He's on his feet, walking gingerly. He just banged kneecaps with somebody. Yeah. That's the worst. It hurts like the Dickens. <laughs> Absolutely nothing wrong other than a shot of pain. And I think you're right, Jack. I think that's probably what happened. That and hitting yourself in the shin with a... Both teams deep into their benches here in the waning moments of the first half. We've got Barros milling around the top of the six, and that one knocked out. Another corner kick. Jared Rimmer, freshman from Sydney, Australia, defender for Notre Dame, just absolutely took out Bethel. 
Delgado. He plays it short to Bethel. Now he'll get it back. Thought about it. Works it down to the end line. Delgado, and the flag comes up. It'll be a goal kick for Notre Dame. That time Charleston decided to not send the corner kick towards the goal mouth. Tried a clever piece of ball maneuvering. Maestre with the pressure takes it away for Charleston. Into the box. Cleared out. Cleary. Long ball up. Oh, Rimmer gets deflected, and here comes Charleston over on the right side. One Gio minute, Diakos, the freshman. Right side, the touch, and that one played out off of Notre Dame, a corner kick for Charleston. They'll go quickly here. This will be the ninth corner kick for Charleston here in the first half. Well, I said they were going to go quickly. I thought they would, but they're taking their time. They may want this to be the last play of the first half, so we're under a minute. Get everybody gathered up where they want them. Left foot, top of the six. The header's there. Not on the mark, though. Another great delivery, though, by Charleston off a corner kick. Ball out. It'll be a throw in for Notre Dame. As time winding down here in the first half. And now the okay. referee says Nine. back it up before the throw in. So take a look at that replay Six, five, on that four, corner kick. Three. As time winds down here in the first half. An opportunity there for Charleston. Barnes got his head on it, just couldn't redirect it. So halftime here at Elliott Field in this Mountain East Conference Men's Soccer Championship. And the Golden Eagles will go to break. Leading 2-0 over Notre Dame College. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about some things here that happened in the first half. Look at some stats and have the second half for you here shortly. You're watching the Mountain East Conference men's soccer right here on the Mountain East Conference Digital Network. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Here are fantastic. My classmates rock. I haven't met anybody that I don't like here. It is definitely a very diverse university. My roommates from Sweden, Germany, Caribbean, so many places. The academics has been stellar as well. The professors are very nice here. Every single person within the classroom feels appreciated. The campus is absolutely beautiful. Everything's a close, easy walk. I, I will recommend that this place to everyone. I feel so at home here.
don't know you'd be. We are there for you, to care for you, at the health plan, we are here for you. We are there for you, to care for you, at the health plan, we are here for you. Watch me dance.
The health plan is a proud corporate partner with the Mountain East Conference for 23 championship. Welcome back inside Elliott Field here on the campus of the University of Charleston in halftime between Notre Dame College and Charleston. Charleston with a 2-0 lead here at the break. As we take a look at the team stats here at the halftime. Shots in favor of Charleston 5-2, 4-0. Shots on goal. Corner kicks. Charleston with nine in that first half to one for Notre Dame. And two saves for Notre Dame College. Pedro Alves, the junior goalkeeper, as the scoring for Charleston in that first half. First one coming in the 10th minute by Louis Redding, assisted by Santiago Hoyas. And then they added the second in the 15th minute. That one coming from Paul Caliari, the assist from Duvon Canchilla. And that's one of the better deliveries that you'll see from Canchilla into the box. Exactly right. Charleston got a good jump. Scored in the first 10 minutes, got a good jump. Made it clear to this Notre Dame team that Charleston was focused, was not disappointed that it wasn't d &E in this championship game. Notre Dame score, showed... Some promise at points, but usually not off of any sort of buildup. They showed promise when they tried to strike quickly. But again, Notre Dame is going to have to dig deep. They did it on Wednesday at Davis and Elkins with two goals in the last 10 minutes. They're going to have to dig deep. Hopefully, if you're a Falcons fan, not wait until the last 10 minutes. This first five minutes, though, I think is going to be crucial, especially for Notre Dame. Notre Dame going right to left as you're looking down on the pitch. Again, in the all-blue kits with the gold numbers trimmed out in white. And they're on the attack here quickly. Outside of the 18. And the ball played along the touchline. Out of throw in for Notre Dame. Alta Silva, Silva gets a start here in the second half for Notre Dame. I thought he had some good moments for the Falcons in the first half. Didn't start the game, but he will start the second half. He's got the ball now. Kai Wagner also out there as he'll throw it in. Gets it into the 18, taken away by Ken Chilla. Cleared out. Notre Dame keeps possession. Play it back to Jordan Lewis. Dio Diakos and... Dudu Barros out there for Charleston to start the second half in those forward positions. Ball played far side and the run up the right side and knocked away. A throw in again for the Falcons. Jared Rimmer also for Notre Dame getting a start here in the second half. Came in late in the first half. Notre Dame, Notre Dame had some promising offensive moments, I thought, in the last maybe 15 minutes of that first half. And the, the same people who created those moments, they're getting the start here in the second half. Yeah. Coach Carl Nolan saying, hey, if you're going to give us a chance, let's start it here in the second half. Of course, the best chance they had in that first half was when Simo Coelho had that 1v1 on Toronto. And the graduate student from Charleston and Sam Bethel with the recovery to take it away in the 18. Long ball up ahead, and there you see Bethel tracking back. He'll let Toronto take it. So Sam Bethel out there for Charleston gets the start. As well as Fran Anton. We talked about the depth of Charleston at the top of the broadcast and you see it here once again today. But Notre Dame has depth too, Jack, and again some of those reserves who led to some promising moments in the first half. Absolutely. They deserve to start the second half, so I'm not sure that the depth of Charleston is as much of an advantage as you see in, in other matches in the Mountain East. Quickly played into the 18. And Pedro Alves comes up and gathers it up for Notre Dame. That time we saw Charleston with the long ball. Trying to get Notre Dame pressed up and not 
in position defensively. Tried to go over top of him that time. Maestre plays it back to Toronto. Boy, you can tell that Charleston is concentrating on Tyler Dyson. Every time he gets the ball, he is getting bodied by a Charleston defender. Toronto, midfield. Ball headed down to the floor. Galliari had a touch on it, and the flag comes up, and it'll be a throw in for Charleston. Bethel, near side. Edu Aranzo. Flicks it to the top of the 18, cleared away. Canchilla keeping pressure. Looking for Barros over on the far side and coming over and governing up is Alves. I think that Alves saw that Barros was probably going to overpower Cleary and get the ball deep, and so Alves did a nice job of making that split-second decision. He'd rather have the ball in his hands. Carlos Almeida. Dribbles here near side and deflected by Cancilla. That's a lot of showboating with the feet without the ball going anywhere. And Cancilla says, yeah, you do that. I'm just going to keep watching the ball. Blocks it out of bounds. Of course, we've already noted Duvon Cancilla, the defensive player of the year here in the Mountain East Conference. His head coach and Daniel Smee, the coach of the year. Ball into the 18, the shot and the goal for Notre Dame. And just like that, Alton Silva draws the Falcons within one. And... Anton, Anton Silva. Silva. Yeah, you can see. Look, just a misplay by the defender. I'm not sure. Didn't catch the number on the Charleston player. Just a misplay. Tried to get the ball out of there. Missed it. Silva there on the cleanup. Really an easy goal. A whistle and a foul on Notre Dame. Again, one of those one of those reserves for Notre Dame who played so well in the first half. Earned the start in the second half. He comes through with Notre Dame's First goal this afternoon, and suddenly Notre Dame College, they are back in this. Silva's fifth goal of the season, and here comes Cagliari over on the far side. Dribbles into the 18, but loses it. Redding gives chase. He'll get a touch on it. And now cleared away by O'Reilly. Back to the feet of Almeida. Nice work by... Aronzo takes it away from Almeida. Up ahead, Redding. Redding flicks it in. Cleared out. Throw in for Charleston. Talked about it in the first half, Jack. The first five minutes after a goal, so important. Charleston trying to take advantage maybe of Notre Dame feeling a little good about themselves, applying the pressure. Cross in. Top of the six, headed away. Boy. Almeida collects it near side. He and Aronzo battle. Ball goes out. It'll be a throw in for Charleston. If Barros was two, three inches higher, he had a great chance at a goal on that and Now they cross. stop and they stop the clock and some pushing. And now the referee calls Almeida over. And Carlos Almeida gives him the thumbs up. He talks to Aronzo as well. Now throw in by Bethel. Redding up ahead. Aronzo works it back to Diakos. Whistle and a foul on Kenchilla. Two one your score, Charleston leading Notre Dame College. And 
Near side. Dyson. Dorado tracks it down. Maestre looking for Redding. Now Cagliari, far side, midfield. Ball out, it'll be a throw in for Charleston. Good contingent of Notre Dame College fans here today. Happy with that goal. Ball played near side. Aronzo. Kai Wagner comes out to challenge. He'll dribble around Wagner. Galliari. Aronzo. And a whistle and a foul on Notre Dame. As the players for Notre Dame pleading their case. Pereira right there just. Yeah, Connor O'Reilly is. is in Aronzo's face, I think he thinks that Aronzo faked it or fell down without contact. Here you can see it. Aronzo's got the ball, dribbles through a couple of Charles, and then, you know what? There's no question then. Pereira stuck his foot out and tripped Aronzo. But boy, Connor O'Reilly for Notre Dame was upset, leaning over Aronzo, saying something. Nonetheless, what happens, the net result of all this is Charleston with a free kick in a dangerous position. About 30 yards out for Charleston. Bethel hovering over the ball. But Aronzo will approach left foot. Aronzo sells it over top of the cross bar. Goal kick for Notre Dame. Tried to set it in the upper Corner, upper left corner, just got a little bit high, about two, three feet too high. And an opportunity wasted for Charleston. Take a look at that replay again as you see it. He got all of it, just a little bit too high. Near side, Aronzo. Challenged by Wagner, keeps possession. Canchilla. Works it inside to Redding, and he'll get it over to Caligari. Back to Redding, Louis Redding. Flicked in the 18, taken away by Lewis. You can see, Jack, this is starting to get to be a very physical game. Checks on the ball are becoming a little bit more physical as this game goes along. Opportunity here down the left side. Beautiful slide tackle by Bethel, and that's going to be result in a throw for Charleston. Sam Bethel coming up big today. Can't do it better than that if you're a defender. Sam Bethel not only timed his tackle perfectly, but then got it off of, as you can see here, the Notre Dame player. Beautiful job by the graduate student. Throw in near side. Bethel will look for Hoyas. And that one's headed away and back out for another throw. Antonio Bittencourt, just two hands in the back of the Charleston player. Easy call for the official to make. They re reverse it over to the far side for Cagliari. Paul Cagliari looking for options. Now plays it back to Bethel. Again, the long ball over in the far side. Maestre this time. He'll get it back. Top of the 18. Hoyas tried to get it back to the charging Maestre and taken away by Notre Dame. Yeah, Charleston had something going there, but just that pass off of Hoyas' foot behind his teammate. And now a whistle. And it was a foul on a Notre Dame. Didn't see what happened. And now they stop the clock. A little <laughs> jockeying for position for the ball there. Kinchilla tried to move the ball up, and Notre Dame thought the ball should be back further, and 
Keeps kicking it back. And Silva they, again kicks it back. And they tried to play it, and the ref stops him again. A little gamesmanship between Canchilla and Silva. Is that mental chippiness? It's not physical chippiness, but it's mental chippiness with the gamesmanship. Anton, long ball to the feet of Diakos. Up ahead, Hoyas into the 18 on the right side. One touch. Hoyas keeps possession. Diakos left foot. Couldn't get much on it. And gathered up by Alves. Boy, it looked like Hoyos one touch too many. Had a chance with his right foot, decided to come back, touch it back to his left, and I think that was one too many. It allowed the defense to collapse on him. Take a look at the replay. He's got it right there, thought he was going to take the shot. Instead, he tries to get it back to his left. Overtouch a little bit, couldn't get it. Shot off, allowed the def defense to collapse on him. And it is Hoyas down on the turf for Charleston. And it kind of looked like I didn't see it on the replay, but. Maybe the breath knocked out of him? And now, well. <laughs> The trainer comes out, and he's checking on Notre Dame's Antonio Bittencourt. Yeah, both of them actually went down at the same time. Okay. Maybe they collided each, with each other. Both of them went down. And it looks like, it looks like Bittencourt got the bad end of that deal as Hoyos is back up, but Bittencourt's got to go to the sideline. Checking in for the Falcons, Eden Hege. Played some in the, in the latter part of the first half. Long ball. Looking for Almeida. He's got it. Near side in the corner. Challenging is Sam Bethel. Now he'll get triple teamed and... Ball knocked away. It'll be a throw in for Notre Dame in the corner. Again, a lot of fancy movement with Almeida's feet. But Charleston defenders just not going for it, watching the ball, and nothing's happening with the ball. Ball out. It'll be a goal kick for Charleston. Just over 31 minutes to go here in the second half. Charleston leading Notre Dame College 2-1 to one in this Mountain East Conference Men's Soccer Championship. Earlier today, up in Frostburg, Maryland, it was Fairmont State defeating Frostburg State in overtime to claim the Women's Championship. Almeida got a touch on it. Now Bethel clears it up. Diakos. Possession, Notre Dame. Almeida. You can, you can see Notre Dame has flipped the script here a little bit here in the second half. That goal has energized them. They are now controlling, or at least winning. I'm not sure controlling is right, but they're winning the midfield. And they are winning the time of possession. Everything, it seems, or most in the middle or in the attacking third for the Falcons. That time, a long shot. Not really a threat. Just to the left of the near goalpost. Easy save by Toreda. Torado. Fourth shot for Notre Dame. Only one of them have been on goal, but that's all they needed to get their first goal. Now on the counter, Charleston. Redding. Cagliari. The turn, and nothing there taken away. On the attack. And now we've got a whistle. An offside on Notre Dame. Or a foul one. Could be a foul. <clears throat> Where's the ball going back to? Now it's offside. Okay. Yeah, when, Char when Notre Dame started that run, there were two Charleston players on the ground. So it's a wasted opportunity for the Falcons. Aronzo heads it back to Bethel. Now he'll get it back. Aronzo making a run. 
Centers it up, looking for Hoyas, not there. Diakos keeps it. Canchilla got a touch on it, but cleared away by Notre Dame. It'll be a throw in here at midfield for Charleston. Good defense by Notre Dame. Looked like Charleston had some opportunities, but defense was just too good for the Falcons. As they stop the clock. Substitutions coming in for Charleston. Look at that replay once again. Aranzo so good at dribbling through traffic. That time, though, the Charleston, I mean, it's a Notre Dame defense just too good. Hoyas near side. Throw in for Charleston. Felipe Mercado, one of the players coming onto the pitch for Charleston. And Joao Belmude's out there. Hoyas tried to cross it into the 18, got knocked away. And that'll be a foul on Anton for Charleston. And again, they stop the clock. And it looks like a yellow card will come out on Anton. Second yellow card today for Charleston. Something tells me, Jack, that's not the last yellow card we're going to see in this match. Wagner near side. Oh, looked like it was out. They play on. And Chilla. Back to Wagner now. Notre Dame on the attack left side. Dyson and quickly coming out and diving on it, though, is Mark Torado for Charleston. Dicey moment as Taylor Dyson was making a run, but Torado left his line, as you can tell here. Crowded the Charleston player. Notre Dame got a bit of a breakout. And Torado timed it perfectly, but you can see Dyson coming in. Hit the foul on Aronzo that time. Ball out off of Notre Dame. Throw in for Charleston. My straight. Up ahead, Hoyos, and that one headed away again. Another throw. Hoyos. We're in the far corner. Well defended that time by Callum Cleary. Jack, is that third goal that Charleston had that was nullified by an offside? Is that starting to loom large in this in this match? Well, right now it is. Because I know they'd like to have a little breathing room. This, and we've already talked about this Notre Dame College team coming back on Davis and Elkins the other night, down two into the 85th minute. Ball played. Here comes the Falcons on the attack. Silva, top of the 18, works it over on the right side. Coelho. Flicks it back. Shot, and a save by Torado. Off the foot of Anton Silva. Silva has been so dangerous for Notre Dame, but what a great save by, by Toronto. As you can see, Silva leads it off for Look at the replay. Coella. Coella flips it back to Silva. Great one touch from Silva. But Toronto anticipated it was going to his right. Dove, beautiful save. But I've said it, said it again. Silva's been so good for Notre Dame. Ready. Off the bench. Touchback, Bethel. And that one knocked out. It'll be a throw in for Charleston.
Bethel gets it taken away. Nice job by Almeida. He keeps it. Dribbles to the midfield. Canchilla there. And but a whistle and a foul before that. And now they stop the clock. Huh. Interesting call. They're calling the fall the foul all the way over here near this near sideline. Well before that. That tackle. Take a look at the replay. Some nifty piece of ball handling right there. Balmeda. But right here Not is sure. where they call the foul. That right that? there. Didn't even touch him. Literally didn't touch Almeida. So, who maintained the possession of the ball, too. And now they get a yellow card on... Well, it was over Bethel? in the vicinity of Bethel and Almeida. I'm not sure who they gave it to. But I assume it's on Bethel. As the training staff continues to look at Duvon Canchilla, who remains down on the floor here. And Coach Daniel Smee of Charleston trying to get an explanation. And Conchilla was down on the ground, so that card was away from Conchilla. So I assume the card, yellow card, the third for Charleston today, was issued to Sam Bethel. As we see Connor Hartwell enter the pitch for Charleston and Duvon Canchilla up on his own power exit. You got to think he's going to re enter shortly and he'll stay right there. Long ball, top of the 18. Bethel gets a touch on it, clears it away momentarily into the feet of Pereira. Pereira tries to work it through. Ball delivered all the way back to Toronto. As he'll pick it up. I was right, there were going to be more yellow cards. I just want to hear you say I was right. Not going to give it to me, are you? Continue play. Bethel loses it. Herrera up ahead. Silva left side of the 18 delivers in and just misses. That was Simo Coelho coming down, right down through the middle. There at the top of the six, got a touch on it, but it goes to the right. Those two teamed up on Notre Dame's goal, and they almost teamed up for the equalizer. Here's Silva on the left-hand side. Beautiful entry in series. There you see Coella with the dive at the ball. Just missed it, but that was a dangerous moment for Charleston. Right now, Coella and Silva are giving Charleston fits on the forward line for Notre Dame. Working so well together. Dorado with the left foot delivers. Wagner. And he just kicks it out. It'll be a throw in for Charleston. Just under 23 and a half minutes to go here in the second half of this championship. Charleston leading Notre Dame College 2-1. to one. That pass up the middle actually hit the referee, who immediately blows the ball dead, gives possession back to Notre Dame. O'Reilly puts it in play over on the far side now. They'll reset with the defense. And O'Reilly again, the long ball. Looking up ahead for Wagner. Knocked away by Charleston. Aronzo. And you see Notre Dame now pressuring the ball handlers of Charleston like we saw Charleston do in the first half. And Charleston is bothered by it. Maestre. Not Kenchilla. Duvon plays it back. As Mercado works it here near side to Bethel. Up ahead, Redding, one touch, Aronzo. Back, Redding in the 18, Aronzo, not there. 
Nice job by Connor O'Reilly of Notre Dame. Came in flying in to intercept that pass because Ronzo had a clear shot. Mercado up ahead. Hoyos. Near side, just outside the 18. Hoyos plays it back. Mercado flicks it in, top of the 18. He'll get it back. Swing it over the left side. Maestre. Aranzo with the left foot, deflected. Hoyas, one touch over here near side, Felipe Mercado. Sends it in on the cross, but into the hands of Pedro Alves. Quickly up to midfield. Charleston takes it back. Here's the one thing you think about, Jack. Notre Dame has spent. Aronzo, the shot deflected. That'll result in a corner kick for Charleston. Notre Dame has expended a lot of energy here in the first part of the second half, getting back into this game. What is the energy level going to be in the last 20 minutes? That's going to be crucial for Notre Dame. You can see on this replay, Aronzo. Got enough on it that Alves had to go diving to his right but could not control it. As a result, Charleston gets a corner kick in the far corner. Boy, that is the 11th. Is that right? 10th, I believe. 10th. First of the second half. Bethel. High ball into the six. Ball deflected, but I believe we're going to have an offsides. Conchilla back in the game. Looked like he had a good opportunity at that header. But again, offsides, Charleston. Of course, Tristan Rose was He's injured earlier, so usually we see Tristan Rose down in there. It's good, good delivery. Actually, it looked like it was Sanchez who was on the back post for the header. All played all the way down. Toronto will gather it up. Slings it over the far side. Maestre up ahead to Mercado. Works it near side, Bethel. Aronzo, one touch, here he goes. Edu Aronzo into the 18. Challenge taken away. Herrera, and the flag comes up. That's going to be a foul. Marcus Pereira went down. Ronzo pleading his case to the side official to no avail. See Scott Abbott again there taking all the action photos as they stop the clock. Sam Bethel on the ground. What I was saying, Scott Abbott's taking <laughs> photos. Uh, you can check him out on his uh, Facebook page, Scott Abbott Photography, as we see the whistle. An exaggerated fall to the ground, which is so unusual in soccer, Jack. Beautiful camera work today, though. It is. Not sure what happened with Bethel. Might be a cramp. He'll go off. Unseasonably warm here in Charleston in November. Yep. Jack's talked about it a couple times. Mattia Vizzoni, the senior, back out on the pitch for Charleston. The normal starter for the Golden Eagles. Sam was playing really well today. Here's a long ball into the top of the 18, the one touch. Charleston back there with the defense. Javier Sanchez pumped up as he gathers. Again, Silva so dangerous on that long pass. Had a chance, got it by the goalkeeper. But what a great play, as you can tell on the replay here. One touch had passed Toronto, but Sanchez there. You couldn't tell from that angle, but that ball was absolutely on goal when Chance Sanchez saved the day for Charleston. Notre Dame trying to... Go on the attack again, but Cancilla was right there. Delivers a buck and kept in, but ball goes to 
Pedro Alves. A little bit of an overpass from Charleston. Hoyos had no choice but to just try to dive and keep the ball in bounds, but in doing that, just send it straight to the Alves, the, the keeper. Long ball looking for Silva again, but coming way off his line that time and gathering up is Mark Torado. You look at that play again and Javier Sanchez pumped up after that defense. Here's Charleston. Maestre. Ganchilla. Bell mutes and it's off of Notre Dame, a throw in for Charleston. 17 to go here in the second half. 2-1 Charleston leading Notre Dame as a substitution for both teams. Connor Hartwell, the graduate student. Back out on the pitch for Charleston. Replaces Lewis Redding. Jack Milford out there. And here comes Notre Dame once again, top of the 18. Dangerous here for Charleston and finally cleared away momentarily. Rivas. Took too much time there and allowed Charleston defenders to come over and take it away. Hartwell. Looking for her. Not there. Rivas, right side, has space, sends it in. Headed away. Top of the 18, cleared back. Aronzo, contact again. They play on. Vizzoni flips it over to Mikado. And taken away by Rivas. As Maestre didn't see him from behind. Taylor Dyson looks around. He'll flick it in. Right side, Silva. Corner kick for Notre Dame. Their second of the afternoon. Silva has been so dangerous all day for the Falcons. Turned and got it towards the goal, but Torado right there for the Golden Eagles. But Notre Dame earns a corner kick. Ball comes in. Top of the six, headed away by Charleston into the feet of Aronzo. Bazzoni will flick it up ahead. Aronzo, Cleary comes out to challenge. And a whistle and a foul. That's actually a really good play by Jordan Lewis. And now the ref stops the clock to talk to Aronzo. And the captain in Duvon Kinchilla comes over and gets in between them, and he'll discuss. Before that, Jack, really good play by Jordan Lewis because that stopped a fast break opportunity by Aronzo. He'll gladly take that foul just to stop Aronzo on a run. Hartwell. Plays it back to Canchilla. Near side and too much pace on that one out along the touchline. Notre Dame throw with 14-20. Near side. And that went off of Notre Dame as it sells over top of the press box. Come on, man. You couldn't catch that? Well, I'm inside, and that was outside, so no. You're just full of excuses today, aren't you? I am. As Paul Cagliari will come on to the pitch for Charleston, and Edu Aronzo will exit. If you're Charleston, you'd love to get an insurance goal. Now they stop but the clock. Love to get an insurance goal, but right now you're also content with melting some time off the clock. Bazzoni. Belmudes, Bazzoni. Back to Belmudes. Left foot. Hoyas keeps possession. The freshman flicks it into the corner to Hartwell. Connor Hartwell across inside. Lewis 
Right foot off the mark. Goes wide right. Looks like Mercado is the one that got a piece of that one. How about that move by Hoyas? You see the cross. Good two punch, or two touch, I should say. Just went wide right. How about Hoyas from the ground keeping that possession alive for Charleston? Galliari gets drugged down. They get the whistle and a foul. It looks like that one will go against Jack Milford. Cagliari content to gently plead a case because those seconds are melting away. And if you're Notre Dame, your anxiety and your energy level should start to ramp up because just about the point where you are desperate for the equalizer. Hartwell, corner, cross. Nobody there for Charleston, heads away. Yeah, good cross, just nobody was making a run to the far post. Gentilla played it back to Meister. Now he gets it back. High ball here at midfield. Takes a big bounce off the turf. Gentilla settles it. Now he'll get it back. Taken away that time, though, by Pereira. Back and forth we go here at midfield between the two. And a battle here. Play on. Wow. Hartwell, Charleston's Hoyas from behind, gets knocked down, keeps up. Hoyas, now they, Dyson comes over, takes it away. Charleston back in possession. Hoyas hits the floor. He'll get back up. Now, Vazzoni plays it back to his defenders. Physical play here in the latter moments of this championship contest. But you can see Charles now content to play a little takeaway. Take Have some good possession. Looking for Joao Belmute on the run over the right side. Well defended by Wagner. The cross in all the way through. Connor Hartwell tracks it down. He'll flick it in. Belmute. Excuse me, that's Mercado. Again, the 8 and 11 blend well together. <laughs> As again, we've got some physical play, and this time, Mattia Vazzoni is down on the turf. Vazzoni and Silva went up for that free ball. Vazzoni went down hard, looked like a hip. I'll tell you what, you look around the pitch, and both teams right now, several of them just leaned over with their hands on their knees. Here's the free kick. You can see that Vazzoni, nothing malicious. Just a straight foul. But, yeah, both these teams are absolutely, they are given that they're all. And I thought with about 20 minutes left, I thought that we saw the first sign of fatigue from Notre Dame because they had expended so much energy to get back in this, getting that equal or the, getting that goal, that you wondered if it was going to be a factor in the last 20 minutes. And you're starting to see Notre Dame is definitely getting tired. Ball played out by Cleary. And now a whistle, and they stop the clock again, and here comes a yellow card, and that's going to be on Jose Rivas, the freshman of Notre Dame College. That's the first yellow we see, or is it the second? On Notre Dame? The second should on be the, Notre Dame. Yeah, it should be the second on Notre Dame. Clock stop, just over 10 minutes to go here in the contest. Notre Dame College looking for a little more late game magic. Ball taken away, and here comes the Falcons over on the far side. Rivas plays it up. Right side. Silva into the 18. Silva shot, deflected. Dyson. They play on. Cagliari that mishandled a, that one. Dyson went down in the box, pleading for the call. I thought it was a good no call. Play on. 
Coelho, left side. He'll cross it in and right into the hands of Mark Torado. Dyson making a run off that cross from Coelho, but he's hobbling a little bit from that physical play at the top of the box. And there has been a lot of physical play here today. Here you see it, Silva. Three defenders around him. Dyson, I thought, good challenge on the ball. Nothing there. Ball out near side. A throw in for the Falcons as Kai Wagner will exit. If you're Notre Dame, you're saying this is our time. Talked about it before, two goals in the last six minutes of the semifinal win over Davis and Elkins. Ned Dry back out on the pitch for the Falcons. Also back out there for Charleston is Tristan Rose. Good to see him back out there. Battle taken away. Mercado up ahead, Cagliari. Gets it taken away. Dyson over to Rivas. Jose Rivas, the freshman. Pereira up ahead. Rose there. Canchilla Hartwell near side. Well done by Hoyas. Ball knocked out. It'll be a throw in for Charleston. Belmutes throws it in to Mercado. Back to Maestre. Seven and a half to go. Charleston would like to have a little insurance right here. Of course, Notre Dame looking for that equalizer. Galliari and Cleary battle over on the far side. And Chilla up ahead and nice step through Lewis that time. Jordan Lewis. <laughs> Belmude's Bel got yeah. a piece of it. Belmude's with a nice defensive play. Long ball, nothing there for Notre Dame. And Chilla, Belmude's. Hartwell works it out to Mercado. You can see the starting to inch into desperation time for Notre Dame, pressuring the ball handler all over the field. That might leave some room for Charleston on the back end. Maestre makes a turn. Left side of the 18. He stops. Space and deflected by Callum Cleary. Had some space. Cleary gets back. To deflect it. Now here comes Notre Dame on the counter, but that'll go out and a throw in for Charleston and substitutions coming in for both teams again. Louis Redding coming in for Charleston and three substitutions for the Falcons. Like Connor O'Reilly comes back in as well as Carlos Almeida. I don't know about you, Jack, but I'm a little surprised to see. Coelho check out for Notre Dame. He's been so good in this second half with teaming up with Silva. He might get back in, but just a little under six minutes left. A whistle on a foul as the defender for Notre Dame had a bear hug on, look like Hoyas. Five and a half to go. Charleston leading two to one in this championship match as we look at the there you and go. Right there, hug. Yeah, it's a little hook. Got the foul on Callum Cleary. Nice piece of... Cleary looks at the official and says, it wasn't much of a foul. Yep. Good piece of camera work once again by our crew here at Elliott Field today. Ball play to the corner, and it slowly goes across the end line. Connor Hartwell and Callum Cleary. So it'll be a goal kick for Notre Dame. They quickly play it in. Jordan Lewis. Long ball headed away by Anton. Notre Dame keeps possession. Now 
Now they reverse it over on the far side. Dyson challenged. Lewis near side. Up ahead, O'Reilly. Lewis delivers into the 18. Knocked around, headed away. Nice job by Charleston that time. It's Hartwell. Almeida comes up way with it. Remmer. Plays it all the way back. Caliari got a foot on it. He gets knocked to the turf, and we got a whistle and a foul on the Notre Dame, and pushing and shoving as they stop the clock once again. And a yellow card comes flying out, and that one, I believe, is going to go against Alton Silva. See, Caliari has the ball here. Steals it, actually. And then right there, it's pretty, yep. pretty blatant. Rimmer Foul on Rimmer. In. Yeah. But I think the words were exchanged, and the referee had heard enough from Silva and issued the yellow card. Long ball into the 18 as Alves collects it. Just over three minutes to go now here in the second half. One goal difference. Charleston leading two to one. And a whistle, and they get a foul on Caliari that time. Right side, Callum Cleary. Up ahead to Rimmer. He'll flick it ahead over into the corner. And gathered up nicely by Charleston. Duvon Canchilla, well done. Rimmer again. They'll try it again. Right side. Deliver inside. Nothing there. Rose. And cleared out by Javier Sanchez. But not a Notre good, Dame. Yeah, not a good clear out by Sanchez. Didn't get much on that enabled Notre Dame to keep possession. Taylor Dyson. Notre Dame putting the pressure on Charleston. Cleared back again. And you can tell Alves well out of the attacking third. Notre Dame delivers. Notre Dame putting everything into this last two minutes. Charleston clears it away. Caliara one touch. Ball out. Throw in for Charleston. Under two. Bar. Barros coming in for Hoyas, for Charleston. Throw in Charleston. Hartwell just sends it away. Sorry. Alves looking for the ball, trying to get going quickly. Under 90 seconds. Notre Dame looking for one last push right here. Hartwell says no. Barros, one touch. Cleary, hill long ball. Looking up ahead, Ned Dry, nothing there. One minute. There's one minute. So we go under 60 seconds here in this championship match. And now contact again. And they're going to get a whistle and a foul on Mercado. Now they stop the clock, and another yellow card comes out. And this gives an opportunity here for Notre Dame to set one up here. Long way away, but more importantly for Notre Dame, they have possession. And they have everybody in the attacking third. That one on Almeida. And Charleston will take their time here. Oh 
And Toronto will come out. Now they'll – a yellow card comes out. I don't know who they issued that to. Was that Mercado? Uh, Sanchez won. I'm not sure. Eighteen point five seconds left on the game clock. And now there's some confusion of the referee blew the whistle to start the clock and, and then didn't like the fact that the clock started. Now he blew the whistle. Let's just say that this has been an uneven few seconds to the to the uh, end of the game. And Charles is complaining because Silva is encroaching. Yeah. He's trying to encroach, block this free kick from Torado. And Torado actually approached the ball, <laughs> faked, kicked it, and well, then pointed out that... Silva coming up. Right, and saw pointed out to the official that Silva is like four yards inside where he should be. So the official Warren Silva steps back, and let's see if we can go again. See if we can get this clock started. Now we're looking at the clock again. He did blow the whistle. But he wants apparently 30 seconds on the clock again. Well here tonight. Take a look at the team stats here at the end. Shots in the favor of Charleston, 8-7. to seven. Shots on goal, 5-4, to four, also in favor of the Golden Eagles. Corner kicks this afternoon, 10 for the Golden Eagles, 2 for the Falcons. There were seven yellow cards issued on the afternoon, 4 to Charleston and 3 to Notre Dame College. Fouls was 13 to 10 in favor of the Golden Eagles. Saves, three apiece for Pedro Alves and Mark Torado. As Alves faced eight shots, Torado faced seven. And the scoring summer here this afternoon. Charleston got on the board in the 10th minute by Louis Redding. Goal assisted by Santiago Hoyas and then added a second goal. And that's all they would need this afternoon in the 15th minute. Paul Cagliari was assisted by Duvon Canchilla. 2-0 your score going into the break. And then that was the score until the 51st minute when Alton Silva Broke through for the Falcons. He was assisted by Pereira. Made it 2-1, to one, Charleston. And, again, a very physical game, especially here in the latter moments between these two teams. But a good hard-fought game. And both teams should be proud of their effort this afternoon. At this time, we are pleased to congratulate members of the As 2022 The teams NEC are down Auburn. on the... Turf. From Davis and Elkins College, Dominique Castano. As a. From Wheeling, Richard Afuela Yonka. Giving away. I believe this is all tournament From team, Dame, Michael. Taylor Dyson. Yep. Taylor Dyson from, from Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Alton Fagner Silva. As is Alton Silva. Both recognized. Both from very good. Charleston, Not just today, Santiago but Hoya. on Wednesday. Oh, from yes, Charleston. from Charleston. Louis Redding. Louis Redding being recognized. And from Charleston, Mark Torado. And the goalkeeper, Mark Torado, a great save today for Torado, the junior from Valencia, Spain. Now, please direct your attention to midfield. Not just that save, but how about Sanchez on that one? Yeah. Silva well, actually got it past Torado. Not just that. Let's talk about Sam Bethel hustling back for Charleston. On the, on the breakaway, absolutely. Just lots of... Outstanding individual plays on both sides, really. As the captain in Devon Cancilla takes the championship trophy from Mountain East 
Conference Commissioner Reed Amos. And the familiar scene here on Elliott Field as Charleston raises the championship trophy and banner. Once and once again, the 2022 the Mountain East Conference Mountain Men's Conference Soccer, Conference Soccer Champions is, is the Golden Eagles of Charleston. They'll run their record to 18-1 and one on the season as Notre Dame College will drop to 15-4-2. and two. And now we wait for the pairings in the Atlantic Regional. It is coming up shortly. And that'll do it from here inside Elliott Field. Again, we want to thank everybody for tuning in this afternoon. We had a good one. And hopefully you see everybody in regional matchup. As again, Charleston celebrating down at midfield. Another championship for the Golden Eagles and head coach Daniel Smee. For Michael Schultz, I'm Jack Withrow again. We thank you for tuning in today. The final score, Charleston gets the victory 2-1 to one over, over Notre Dame College to claim the men's soccer championship. You've been watching live streaming coverage of Mountain East Conference Soccer right here on the Mountain East Digital Network.